A friend recently gave me some very helpful feedback on my videos. She said I look very polished, which could be intimidating those of you who want to improve your English skills. Perhaps if you shared some of the messiness, she said, then people might be able to relate more. Now, this isn't the first time that someone's mentioned how I come across in the videos as well as in person. People say things like, oh, Tanya, you're always so well put together. And uh, other people say, oh, but you never make mistakes. <laughs> it's funny because, um, well, <laughs> I want you to know that I have most definitely failed big time with a capital B. <laughs> And in fact, it's in great part thanks to those failures that I'm with you here right now today. Failure is the master of all teachers. To be treated with great care, tenderness and respect. It plays a huge part in attaining confidence. You see, because confidence and fluency aren't tools that you keep in your toolbox and pick out when you need them. Being confident in English, in reality, means being confident in yourself. So stay with me as I save you time and energy by retracing my steps through monumental failures that led towards gaining a solid base, a true groundedness which has helped me in countless ways from living a much more spacious and comfortable lifestyle to creating my own signature English training program, which you can find out more about in the description box below, to making huge strides in my own management of a third language, which is Portuguese, which I've been able to do by implementing my own systems. And perhaps most importantly, by deeply and sincerely enjoying everything that I do. If you haven't done so yet, click the subscribe button and remember to invite the bell to be notified every time I upload a new video, which will be relevant to you if you're looking to improve your English skills. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Tanya Meyer and I'm an English as a foreign language teacher to adults specializing in mindfulness practices to help bring clarity, joy, and understanding to your English language acquisition and use in real life situations. Okay, so for this video, I'm going to ask you to have a journal and a pen handy because I'll be dictating some questions along the way for you to reflect on and write about at the end of the video. And, and do stay until the end because I'm going to share with you something else that you can do with this video when you watch it again. Okay, so here we go. When I first came across the British Council Teaching Center here in Mexico over a decade ago, it was by complete chance. And it was like suddenly seeing land after years of drifting and being lost at sea. You see, I'd moved back to Mexico from the UK four years prior to that in 2007. And I'd had all kinds of ideas about what my life back in Mexico would look like after nearly 10 years in the UK. Well, to make a long story very short, let me just say that absolutely everything I tried to do to build that ideal life that I had thought about in the UK here in Mexico failed miserably. To be honest, I'm surprised, of course delighted, that I survived relatively intact those years of loss, uncertainty, great anger and frustration. You see, now that I'd returned, there seemed to be so many 
limitations. I didn't seem to have anything to contribute to the company I'd come back to join. There was nothing I could bring to the table. No opportunity for me to create a new role for myself within the company. And little by little, it became clear. And I don't say this lightly, because it was absolutely devastating at the time that there was simply no room for me there. And that I'd returned to Mexico based on memories and unrealistic expectations. Now, let me just add in brackets here that I absolutely adored living in the UK. From the very first day I arrived, through that freezing cold winter without central heating, all the wonderful places I went to, all the amazing adventures I had, all the wonderful people I met and the friends I made, all of that was heartbreaking to let go of when I decided to return to Mexico. There was a part of me that didn't want to leave and continued to feel deep sadness long after I'd moved away. So here I was back in Mexico, a country I'd lived in before, so I thought I knew, and that I had chosen to return to after nearly a decade in the UK. Without the role in the business that I thought I was returning to be a part of, I was on my own with an elderly dog, and I had no idea what to do next. Things were looking very grim indeed. How was I going to support myself at 42 years of age with nothing on the horizon? If feelings of failure are resonating with you in any way, click the like button and comment below with a failure that you've learned from. Okay, so not long after that realization that nothing I'd imagined was working out, I came to my first realization the one that I'd like to share with you today. And it's that I sat down and I asked myself this question. Tanya, what do you want to do now? What do you want? So please take out your journal and write these questions down, which you'll be reflecting on and answering after you've watched the whole video. Okay, are you ready? The questions are, what do I want? What's my heart's desire? Have a little brainstorm and write down absolutely everything that comes to mind. Don't worry if it's ridiculous, if it's preposterous or absolutely impossible right now. Don't worry. It's your journal. No one's going to read it. Just write it down. What is my heart's desire? Think about something that you'd be glad to do for the rest of your life, even if you have little or no knowledge about what it involves. Just write the questions for now. In my case, I remembered the programs that I used to watch in the UK. I'd spend a lot of time. Back then, we used to watch TV. You know, there wasn't so much internet. There was internet, but people didn't spend that much time on the internet because there was television. And the programs that I loved watching were mainly related to property. I loved programs about property, conservation, refurbishment, and renovation. I just love them. The before and after scenes, the amazing transformations. I just found them mesmerizing. Hmm, could I do something in the property industry? I did some research and found a woman in the US who created a branch of the real estate industry called home staging. Now, home staging means preparing properties for sale so that they sell at the best possible price and in the shortest possible time. A little bit more research and I found myself registering for this woman's course in Seattle, US that would train me to become a property stager. Perfect. All I had to do now was understand how the business worked and 
start freelancing my services to all the local estate agents. Got this. Another little aside here is that you might be asking, well, I mean, why didn't you just start teaching again? And that's a very good question, which I'll be very happy to answer, but not in this video. Let me know in the comments below if you want to hear that story and I'll film another video. Okay, so back to property staging. The, the course that I went to was only a few days long, but well, the drawbacks, the disadvantages were firstly, that I wasn't familiar with the property industry. And secondly, that all the materials were in English. So I spent the next full year translating all the materials, creating my own company, designing the brand, understanding the concept, and just incorporating everything that needed to be done so that I could present the service to the Mexican market. And finally, one day in late 2010, I was ready to launch my very own home staging business here in Mexico. Needless to say, that attempt was also a failure. And it had now been four years since I had earned a single peso, penny or dime. This was rock bottom. And it's when I came to my second realization. I couldn't keep trying to do something new or something different. I couldn't keep trying. I needed to surrender and accept the situation as it was. And this was a life-saving internal shift. For the next few weeks, I spent entire days looking at all the work that I had done, all the efforts I'd made, all the dreams and intentions I'd had, and practicing acceptance and surrender. Yes, it was true. All my attempts to set myself up in the business world had failed. As soon as I was able to truly accept this, I was filled with an instant sense of deep relief. So these are the next questions that I'd like you to write in your journal. What isn't working in my life right now? What do I need to surrender to and accept at this moment? Surrendering internally is an extremely powerful act. When we accept defeat or failure wholeheartedly, it's a sign that we've understood that we're on the wrong path. And that is such a precious gift that the universe can offer us. And it was very shortly after this surrendering that the British Council appeared on my radar and manifested by chance. Wait, British Council Mexico? Oh, wow. And they teach English to adults. Oh, wow. And I'm a highly qualified teacher of English to adults. Bingo. The thought that swirled in my mind at that moment was, I don't need to own a business right now. I don't have to be a businesswoman if that's not on the cards for me at the moment. I lived a very comfortable life in the UK being a teacher of English to adults. So I can live a very comfortable life being an English teacher to adults in Mexico. I don't need to create a whole new business. All I need is a job. <laughs> this was a huge and extremely comforting realization. Perhaps you too might be overcomplicating some things. Perhaps there's a more simple solution to any problems that you might have. So these are my next questions for you. Please write them in your journal. At the most basic level, what are my needs? Is it necessary for me to be so busy all day, every day?
And this brings me to the fourth step on how to start walking on the path of confidence and inner trust. You see, just because I'd secured a position teaching English to adults at the British Council here in Mexico does not mean that all my problems were suddenly solved. No, because I hadn't taught for four years and the circumstances under which I had taught in the UK were very different. And I looked like a person who had 20 years experience teaching English to adults. But I didn't. I only had three years experience teaching English to adults because teaching English to adults was a second career. Before that, I'd worked in the marine industry. And that's what I thought I'd be doing here in Mexico. <laughs> so the reality is that although I was a highly qualified teacher of English, I was feeling very insecure about teaching English all of a sudden. And here's a little lesson for you that a lot of knowledge does not equate to confidence. That's not where confidence is. So it's not your knowledge of English that's going to take you to a place of confidence to interact in English. So something that I need to explain about an, a global organization like the British Council is that things change very quickly. And I had been stuck for four years so suddenly finding myself in a very well-oiled machine that, you know, moves forward at what seems like warp speed with students changing every two months and materials and levels and books. And it was like, <laughs> it was just completely unsustainable. And in addition to that, I felt encouraged to say yes to everything that was offered to me. So all of a sudden I had this plate that was just filled with things that I had accepted. And of course, next thing I knew, I broke down again because I just couldn't handle all that work. I wasn't performing well and I had an elderly dog to take care of and I was just working too many hours. And I remember explaining this to my line manager who was 20 years younger than me with tears rolling down my face in a very unprofessional way. So here was my next great lesson. In my fear of being perceived as incapable or unable or of disappointing the people who had given me a job, I had accepted way more than what I was able to deliver instead of saying no. From that moment on, and even today, I only accept as much work as I know that I can handle and deliver well. So with this in mind, here's the fourth and last set of questions for you to write in your journal. What weight or overload can I let go of because it doesn't serve my own best interest? What do I need to say no to? So there you have it, four sets of questions to help you build confidence in yourself. And this confidence will translate into more confident and fluent English as you engage more fully with it in your day-to-day -day life. And to learn how to do that, make sure you download my free guide, How to Revolutionize Your English in Eight Steps which I'll leave a link to down in the description box, filled with tips and suggestions for you to incorporate English into your everyday life. And something else you can do, which is what I mentioned at the beginning of the video, is to notice that what I've done in this one is to story tell, right? And what do we do when we're telling a story in English is that we use narrative tenses. Narrative tenses are the different forms of verbs so that we can help the listener understand what is happening when. 
in the story. So after writing your reflections and allowing those to just settle, why not watch this video again and notice the narrative forms? In other words, how verbs are used. Can you identify the verbs and understand why they're used in those particular forms? Would you like me to film another video on narrative tenses? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Remember to invite the bell to be notified when I upload a new video. See you then. Bye for now. Bye.